Well, let's talk about the additions. Now, there's a couple of changes here in R2 uh, that I want to highlight. won't be a very long video. We've got a couple of long videos coming up in the next two, so let's just power through this one here. The high-level changes at the addition level is that we have two new additions. These are additions we have not had in previous versions of SQL Server, and these new additions are at the premium end. So that means that they are more expensive than Enterprise Edition. Okay, so Enterprise Edition is no longer the top SQL Server Edition, starting with R2. Okay, and I'll explore kind of how that works here. Enterprise Edition is actually, you could say it's somewhat crippled relative to some of the new editions now. Okay, just like, you know, how Standard Edition has hard limits that say, well, you know, if you really need this sort of hardware, then you should probably buy the Enterprise Edition. Okay, that's kind of how their thinking is when they set the licensing up. Same thing now with Enterprise Edition. They want you to go ahead and spend that extra money if you're really doing some serious data warehousing. Okay? Now, R2 is also going to be a little bit more expensive than SQL Server 2008, so you'll have to check with your vendor. Uh, on that. Now before we get into the details, let's get a few things here. What's the difference between a socket and a core? You know what I'm talking about, right? Like at, at the CPU level, right? So what's the difference between a socket and a core? Because this is like super, super important when it comes to understanding additions and licensing. Okay? And it's going to become in SQL Server 2012 maybe more important. Okay? A socket is on your motherboard, right? If I zoom in right here, you can actually even see it says socket right there on it, right? That's what you're going to put your CPU in, right? So that's called your socket, right? So you buy a CPU, and then you go put it into the socket. Okay, I know. This is probably, for most of you, this is, you know, pretty basic stuff. But I, I think it's important that we cover all the bases so we don't leave anyone behind. Like I said, this is a pretty critical topic here. So on the left is a socket, on the right is just an example, a Xeon 5600 series CPU. Okay? Now, and sometimes it's called a CPU socket. Okay? Now, a single CPU can have many cores. So we buy that one Xeon 5600 series CPU, but really, it might be an eight-way CPU. It might actually have eight cores. Okay? So when we then install it in the operating system, it shows up as logical CPUs. So it actually shows up as an eight-way system. Okay? So we go to Task Manager, which you're seeing a, a screenshot of right there, and it shows eight CPUs. Okay? So that's a core. A CPU can have many cores. Okay? So you've got a socket, a CPU, and a core. Okay? Now, to discuss that a little bit deeper, you've got a main board, motherboard, I don't know how you say it, uh, you've got a single motherboard, you can have one socket, you can have a dual socket motherboard, that would be a motherboard that has two sockets on it. Okay? You can have a quad socket, okay, four, uh, we can have a single CPU that can have one or more cores. Again, probably not new information to you here, uh, but I think all of your modern server level processors are going to be quad core or higher today. Maybe you, you might find it difficult to buy a new processor with less than six cores, actually. Now, let's just take a sample OLTP server. Okay? This would be a pretty decent server. It uh, wouldn't handle super high-powered stuff, but this would be a fairly decent server. You would have a dual socket main board so that you could put two CPUs in, right? You would then go buy two six-core CPUs, okay? and now when you boot up your OS, it's going to show you that you have 12 CPUs if you have a hyper-threading disabled. If you have hyper-threading turned on, you're going to have 24 CPUs. Okay? Uh, I just have an example here, the Intel Xeon. As I 
record this. Uh, it is 2012 and the Xeon X5690, great CPU for running your OLTP applications on. Right there. So just an example, I might go buy two of those, put that in this system, and I'd have just a killer little OLTP system. I'd be able to run 100 gig databases all day long on something like that with a, you know, 600, 800 connections. Right? Now, the whole reason that we went through that whole discussion on core CPU socket is so that we could get to this question. If I tell you that SQL Server 2008 R2 can use a per processor licensing model, what does that mean? Right? Are they talking about when I have to buy a license? I have to buy a license for every processor per processor and those licenses might be seven grand or twenty-five thousand dollars per processor. Are they talking about that I have to license the physical CPU or do I actually have to buy a license for each core? Because that's a big difference, right? Going back to our decent OLTP server, I have two physical CPUs. Let's just price this at $5,000 per CPU for a SQL Server license. Okay, I'm probably on the low side there for a standard edition. Okay? So I'm talking about $10,000 here. But that's 12 cores. So if it's having to license the physical CPUs, it's 10000 But if I have to license the cores, then it's 5 times 12. Okay, now I'm at $60,000. Now I've got a huge difference in licensing costs depending on what Microsoft says I have to license. So do you have to license the physical CPU or do you have to license the number of cores? Right. Big question, big important answer. SQL Server 2008 R2 only counts the number of sockets. Okay. So in our example we would only have to pay $10,000 in licensing costs. Okay. That's going to change in SQL Server 2012 my friend. SQL Server 2012 is going to say, uh, 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 we want to license the number of cores. <laughs> More on that in those courses, right? <laughs> but so this is really, really important. SQL Server 2012, when you buy a per processor license, you only have to process, uh, uh, pay for the number of sockets. Yeah, right? So a six core CPU only requires a single CPU license. Right? You can read um, in, in this uh, link here, uh, you should know that included with this video is a PDF and you can just load up that PDF so you don't have to type that in you can just click on it inside the PDF uh, take you straight to the licensing document for R2. Now let's talk about those new additions. Okay? I've got some of your uh, maximum hardware listed here but look down here at these two guys these are our two new premium editions data center and the PDW, the Parallel Data Warehouse. Now, I, we'll, we'll kind of develop this further. Again, you can see down here the source. There's the link down there. Okay. Um, but notice that there's now, in under Enterprise, it doesn't say OS Max for the number of CPUs, does it? It doesn't say OS Max for the maximum amount of memory. Remember how I said that the Enterprise was somewhat crippled today? Well, these are part of the crippled features. Right? So the new, the two new premium additions that we have, data center, this is the new top dog for most of the people. Okay? This is what is stepping above enterprise and taking its place. Parallel data warehouse, really, really, really specialized. Okay? It's for data warehouses and it requires purchasing one uh, one and a half, two, two and a half racks worth of server and infrastructure hardware. It's not just going and buying a license like it is with Enterprise or Standard Edition. Okay. You want PDW? You better call up one of the big vendors, Hewlett Packard, uh, Microsoft, Dell, and you better say, okay guys, we're ready, we want to talk to somebody, and we've got We've got these two spaces right here. We want you to wheel the racks in and let's set this up. Okay, it's not a small setup here. Now, data center versus enterprise, all other features are the same with the exceptions here of the hardware limitations. And this is the first time that we've ever seen that I remember 
in the SQL Server database space, there's something above Enterprise Edition that crippled Enterprise Edition. Enterprise had always been thought of as the top tier, right? But not anymore. Notice there's a somewhat of a, a logical difference here. Enterprise Edition can have eight sockets. Right? That's what that says. Eight CPUs, eight sockets. Right? Now those could be six core, but you know you could. What if what if you got 40 core? So you could put eight 40 core processors in there. Right? But with Data Center Edition, they limit you to 256 logical CPUs. So they don't care how many sockets you have. It's kind of weird to me. I'm not, I'm not sure about this. Uh, be interested. I haven't seen as of yet, as I record this right now, the SQL 2012 Data Center licensing heart and hardware requirements. So I don't know what the difference is. But I'll be interested to see if they maintain the same dichotomy here because it, it, it's um, it's just incongruous with uh, what I would have thought uh, I don't know anyhow uh, the RAM noticed that Enterprise Edition maximum up to two terabytes uh, whereas Data Center we can go as much as the OS can go okay um, so the stream insight we're going to talk about in I don't know maybe like five six videos from now so we'll talk a little bit more uh, about that when we get there uh, again, parallel data warehouse, PDW, a very different beast. Uh, with your standard edition, your enterprise edition, your uh, data center edition, you're using your own server, right? This uses its own hardware infrastructure. You're talking about blade servers. We're talking about uh, just uh, hardware storage. This is a document I pulled from the Microsoft website about PDW, and you can see basically the racks that are listed here. Here's your database servers, here's your storage nodes. Okay. This is a this is just not the same type of thing. This is where you're going to have a month's worth of meetings with Microsoft Consulting. You guys are all going to set it out. And, you know, it'll take six months to get everything up and running and planning and writing the apps to, to use this effectively. Okay. So pretty serious here. So you have to buy that with the hardware uh, solution cannot just buy a license for that okay so give you the link right there all right I tell you what let's come back in the next video and continue a little bit more on additions and licensing by introducing the idea of virtualization into SQL Server 2008 R2